redo that? No, no, keep going. Welcome to the Buck Buzz. I'm Jake Hibbert. And I'm Jenna Bradshaw. So Jake, have you been to Rudy's yet? No, I haven't had the chance to go still. Have you been? Yeah, I went last week and I'm so happy that they're open again. Well, let's send it over to Alex and Trevor and Martin with more information on Rudy's. Recently, Rudy's located on County Route 89 opened for their seasonal session, which occurs every early to mid-spring. This historic restaurant has become a commonplace for people to come and enjoy their favorite seafood dishes dating back all the way to the 1940s. People can enjoy their meals while looking at the beautiful lakeside view, also while walking up and down the lake shore. Recently, we asked students on what they thought about the seasonal opening for Rudy's, and this is what they had. A chance to I go to Rudy's to have my favorite, of course, which would be a hamburger, a hot dog, and maybe a little bit of a cream soda. Great. I think everybody looks forward to the opening of Rudy because actually Rudy is a name that's well known not only in the Swiggo, but through the state of New York, I think the United States and the world. I feel like uh, happy that Rudy's is back open because now my family, like we can go out and take the whole family out and have a good dinner at, by the lake. Our food is probably the fish and chips because it's really fresh. It's a big deal because um, it's right on the water and like a lot of people like eating on the water and it's, it's cheap there and they have really good food. The Rudy's, um, they bring a lot of customers in and um, they make a lot of money out there because everybody like loves fish and stuff. So. Favorite food is probably the chicken tenders they serve and they have good ice cream too. In fact, a lot of people like their food there. Um, I usually like to get out there a few times a year. Some of the menu dishes that are very popular include the Texas Hots and just regular fish and chips, along with many other great platters. So next time you're out and by the lake and hoping to enjoy some nice seafood, stop by at Rudy's just next to Bev's and the Wonton House on County Route 89. I think I really need to get out there soon. Yeah, you should definitely go. Have you heard anything about the glow ball? Yeah, I've seen some of the posters up around the school. Me too. Don't you think it looks pretty cool? Yeah, but I don't really know much about it. Well, I can fix that. The sophomore class will be holding the glow ball in the Oswego High School new gym on Friday, April 8th from 7 to 10 p.m. Admission is $5 and students will receive a free glow necklace when they pay. At the dance, there will be a DJ, a glow photo booth, and a black light, so students should wear neon and white clothing. Throughout the night, students will be able to buy pizza, water, extra glow sticks, and glow face paint. Everyone at OHS is invited to come and support the sophomore class. It's a great opportunity to have fun with your friends, and fundraisers such as this are very important. It looks like it's going to be pretty cool. Yeah, the idea of a glow-in-the-dark themed dance is really fun and creative. I think I'll probably end up going. I think it's going to be fun. Yeah, me too. So, Jenna, did you have Easter dinner on Sunday? Yeah, I ate at my grandparents' house with the rest of my family. Well, after you ate dinner, did you get a chance to watch the SU game? I did, and it was an amazing game. Yeah, they had the best comeback of the tournament, and they came out with a win against Virginia. Both the men's and women's teams made it to the Final Four. That's legendary that they have both teams going. I hope they can both make it all the way. Well, the SU men have a tough game ahead against UNC, and the women's have to play Washington, so... Let's hope for the best. Now let's send it over to Alex Hessig, who has more information on the tournament. Thanks, guys. This week in Sports Corner, I need to take a minute in figuring out how the Syracuse men's basketball team not only came back from 9 down against Gonzaga late in the second half, but also came back from 15 down with under 10 minutes left against Virginia to clinch a Final Four berth. Many are attributing the comeback to Jim Beheim's press, and some of the credit deservedly should go to that adjustment. But the true difference, especially in the Virginia game, was Syracuse finally started making shots. Malachi Richardson scored 21 of his 23 points in the second half to secure the Midwest region's most outstanding player. And Mike Benege was also named to the all-region team. Syracuse heads to Houston, hotter than any other team, and riding a newfound wave of confidence that could help them knock off the last number one seed remaining, the North Carolina Tar Heels. Syracuse is still seen as a heavy underdog, even though the Orange have come close to knocking the Tar Heels off twice this season. It will be interesting to see if Carolina's outside shooting or SU zone prevails in this ACC Final Four matchup. Be sure to watch and support the Orange on Saturday night. Tip-off is set for 849 on TBS. That's all for Sports Corner. Back to you guys. 
I really hope both men and women's teams win. That'd be so awesome. We can only hope. So Jenna, have you ever been to Bishop Commons before? Yeah, I've been there a few times. It's a really great place for senior citizens to go for care and support. Staff and citizens, staff and residents at Bishop Commons recently gathered to celebrate the 16th anniversary of what continues to be a wonderful residential setting with incredible care and supportive services for senior citizens. Their recently held Sweet 16 party gave both staff and residents an opportunity to share experiences and reflect on the many wonderful people who have over the years come to call Bishop Commons home. During the anniversary celebration, Executive Director Karen Murray addressed those gathered, noting that when Bishop Commons was opened in 2000, it was the only residence of its kind in Oswego County. And now, 16 years later, we continue to play a leading role in the continuum of senior services that help people remain active members of the very community they helped to build, Murray said. Murray also thanked her staff, noting how fortunate Bishop Commons is to have staff with such a tremendous amount of experience and dedication. Many there have been employed at the residence since it first opened. I didn't know Bruh. it's been, along for that, or been around for that long. That's really cool. It really is. Well, that's all for this week's edition of the Buck Buzz. Have a great weekend and week, everybody. And remember to keep tuning in to WBUC for more student-produced television.